how would you look at this? Here we are on a Sunday morning or Sunday afternoon or maybe a random Thursday if you just found this video and you wanted to check it out. We are actually going to review a Ring of Honor pay-per-view. Oh, how far we've come. But it seemed like a very good idea given that AEW or Tony Khan has bought Ring of Honor. So I decided, well, why don't we take the finger of power and give the good bits a bup and the bad bits a down for Death Before Dishonor which is a very terrifying name, because one, you've done something that makes everybody hate you, and two, you're dead. What are we talking about? I don't know. Let's upload that. They have something with Ring of Honor, given that it is now owned by Tony Khan, who of course also operates AEW, because you can kind of treat it as some sort of alternative promotion where you can do crazy things and everyone's always going to be happy with it, which is why the first match on the main card was Claudio Castagnoli versus Jonathan Gresham for the damn ROH world title. William Regal was also on commentary, which made this even better. And while I'm sure probably at some point in the past, Claudio and Gresham have gone at it. I've never seen it, so this felt brand new and fresh. It was like I was eating some bread. The prize surprise, they absolutely smashed it too. Because ever since Claudio has arrived in non-WWE land, he doesn't care. So as soon as the bell rang, he was just throwing in these uppercuts. And Jonathan Gresham, man, I think we all forget this. He is like some sort of technical wizard. He's got power in his fingers. Of course, Castagnoli is the bigger man, so he started to throw Jonathan around the place including hitting the big swing very early on. This ain't Jolly Boy's first rodeo. He was like, ha ha, taller man, I'm going after your knee. He worked on this for a good while too, which meant when Claudio went to do stuff like the sharpshooter, he wasn't able to do it. Otherwise, this was just wrestling tennis. I mean, there were suplexes, there was backbreakers. And at one point, Gresham applied the ankle lock, and I actually bought into the fact that maybe, just maybe, Claudio would tap. So they did a great job. John then screwed up because he tried to outsmack Claudio, who was like, uh, no, you're not going to do that. He just whammed him right in the face. And then seriously, all the moves after this. Because there was inseguries, lion salts, limb attacks, German suplexes. It rocked. Then they went full on reversal mode, which was even more impressive because this was towards the latter end of the match. When Claudio remembered who he was representing, he started to rain down with those elbows right into Gretchen's face before he hit the Ricola bomb. And I'm gonna lie, I count along with the referee because I'm so excited. But he went one, he went two, he went three. And for the first time in his very much underrated career, Claudio is a damn world champion. This really did feel like a moment if you've been following him from the very start and the fans absolutely loved it. And you could just see on Claudio's face, he was over the moon here. So of course it gets an up. Go watch it. Quick interview with Daniel Garcia after this, who was basically like, man, nobody wants a pure title because nobody wants more rules in wrestling. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to win that championship. I'm going to bring it to Dynamite. And then me and the rest of the Jericho Appreciation Society are just going to break it. I love this man. He's great. I totally assumed that something with less stakes was going to come after this, but that was not the way on this evening because it was Dalton Castle and the boys versus the Righteous for the Ring of Honor six-man tag team championships. This kind of tied into the last match too, because Vince McMahon, Bateman and Dutch are bigger than the boys. So they basically stood over them like, <laughs> look at these absolute jabronis. And they just kicked their ass. Friend of the boys was taking a lot of this too before he did this dodge move and he tagged in Dalton Castle. And seriously, this guy is always so over, everybody went nuts. He also did so many suplexes here. I'm pretty sure before the show, somebody had told him, Dalton, have you heard the news? They expire in the next 24 hours. And then he even took his own teammates and was throwing them over the top rope at his enemies. I mean, why the flub not? Peter Von Starr, who was out with the Righteous, then tried to cast distraction, but that did not fail. Although all of this segment ended with Dutch doing a dive, even though Dutch doesn't look like a man who should be doing a dive. But as I said before, and as I shall always say, in 2022, you must be able to do one thing. And I'll spell it out for you in case you haven't caught up with this. I'm talking about dives. The writers then had this crazy near fall that Dalton had to break up at the last second. And once again, it just felt like everybody here was like, damn it, we're going to prove a point. But there was another tope, there was a retaliatory suplex, which is an amazing name I just made up. There was a tag, there was another German suplex before Dalton and his boys hit the bangerang. At least from my perspective, 
got a very surprising win because we were two matches in and we'd had two title changes. This was just super fun and honestly, Dalton Castle could make it anywhere. Was just having such a good time. Up. It was doubly true because then we got something different. Pure rule. This minute was Daniel Garcia versus Wheeler Utah, and of course we had all the judges here and all the bells and whistles that come along with a pure rules match. And while I know that Wheeler Utah and Daniel Garcia have wrestled a lot in the past, surely this has to be the biggest stage they did it on, and they wanted to prove a point. There it is again, and they absolutely did. They went super grappling early on with Regal back on commentary, who added so much to this because he was like, oh yes, back in the day when I worked for WWE, I would come to Ring of Honor to scout because I understood how important it was <laughs> when Garcia just took Willie Uter and threw him to the outside onto the floor. Like he was a sweet rapper and he didn't care about lyrics. Regal was then back telling us why these two are super duper stars and they're going to be brilliant in the future. And also explaining why Wheeler Yuta was being beaten up when he was being beaten up and how being in the Backbull Combat Club will help him. I mean, seriously, I hate using this word, but if you enjoy sitting down to watch wrestling and people are going out of their way to make it feel real, well, this is probably the best example in ages. You must have heard this too because Wills then caught Daniel Garcia, hit with a slam, and sent on his ass. And then he was just going for all of these ridiculous submissions. It was kind of crazy because Utah was then also trying to bust out German suplexes. And I was like, that's it. It doesn't matter about your super kicks or whatever else in other promotions. When it comes to ROH, we do Germans. Oh, that sounded terrible. He also somehow transitioned from that into a Kimura. But Garcia was like, no, no, I don't want any of this. So he bit. Wheeler Yuta. And it doesn't matter how many times I see a bite, I've got problems and I'm always going to laugh. He also started to smack Wheeler with all those elbows, I suppose as a wink wink nod nudge to the BCC and eventually they were just tussling on the top. When Yuta got back into it with this massive drop kick, this was very good. They were then slapping each other because why the flub not? When Wheeler scored with such a big shot, Garcia went down. So Yuta was like, hey referee, you better start counting to 10 because I think he knocked him out which once again ties into pure rules. It wasn't the finish, of course, and instead we just went back to technical wrestling, including Wheeler Utah doing the Lion Tamer. And if you get it, great, and if not, don't worry about it. Daniel did this too, because he hit a pile driver and then started to do the stomps a la Daniel Bryan, or Bryan Danielson, I should say. So this was just faction warfare. Although he shouldn't have done that because he's not trained in these ways. So somehow Wheeler Utah got out of the way, scored with the most devastating move in all of sports entertainment, the surprise roll up. And very surprisingly, that was the end. This was absolutely brilliant though, and afterwards Daniel Garcia kept up his role because he refused to do a handshake and he just started flipping everybody off. And seriously, three or four years down the line, these two are gonna be smashing it even more than they're doing now. It's kind of scary. Up. And then, <laughs> just flub off. Because it was Roos versus Dragon Lee, and if you are not familiar with these two guys, I implore you to find 15 minutes in your day and sit down and watch this. Because just to sum it up as best as I can, it's fucking ridiculous. I also want to point out that it doesn't matter if you're not aware of these two wrestlers. You're allowed to be a wrestling fan and not know of every single superstar on the planet. But be it the speed or the quickness or just the moves they were coming up with. I, mean, I don't know how they did any of this. They did start with wrestling, which I do like because that's always been ROH's thing. And you had the added story here that they were brothers facing off for the first time. It didn't mean they held anything back though because Roosh hit this ridiculous dive. And because Barry Barricade had a somewhat quiet evening, he just grabbed Jangan and started to chuck him into it. And I was like, okay, here we go. I mean, the stuff they did on the outside too. I mean, there's one spot I can't even explain to you because it was too off the radar. But basically, Dragon Lee put Roosh on a table and he got back in the ring and he just dove at him into this massive explosion. I was like, where on earth did that come from? They also murdered each other with these suplexes and did a belly to belly suplex on the floor. And apparently that wasn't enough because they followed up with a hurricanrana to the outside. By that point, I was just doing this. I was like, I understand. How the hell am I going to recap this? These guys have lost it. But look, as is my catchphrase today, it was yet more dudes who were like, man, we'll show the world how good we are. And we even let Dragon Lee kick out of Rush's big drop kick in the corner, which apparently nobody's ever done before. There's also a double foot stump from the top and an amazing near fall after a Liger bomb. And from here, pfft, that's all I got. I'm turning into a horse again. Pfft. I can't sit here and just go move, 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 because you're like, oh no, Simon turned into a robot and he is shutting down. But basically, Rush was able to get his bull rush drop kick, whatever we do call it, for a second time. 
He got the one, two, three, and I stood up and applauded. I don't care that there was nobody with me. I am happy to look like a goober. I have not done this justice. They really are very talented individuals, and we should probably rerun this on Dynamite soon, just so more people can see it. The best thing about this pay-per-view do is that it did exactly what it said on the tin. Everybody was promising you good wrestling, good wrestling, good wrestling. So out came Mercedes Martinez and Serena Deeb for the Women's Championship and they gave us good wrestling. This show had actually been booked better than I thought too because I sat there when I like to make my predictions because again, I am a massive geek and I was like, well, I totally believe Deeb could win and I totally believe Mercedes could retain. So once again, I was up on my feet applauding because I was like, well, you did it. Once again, they started wrestling to begin with because that is the way when Mercedes cut Serena Deeb off with this spine buster and went, ha ha, see ya, and threw her to the outside. Deeb then returned with a spear on the apron. I did some checking, that is the hardest part of the ring. And then they both fell to the outside, obviously, and the falls they took off that started doing this because it made me feel all oogly boogly. I mean, it was like when you drop a pancake from the pan, but you eat anyway because you're disgusting. It ended with them tussling on the top, which is wrestling's favorite thing, where Mercedes Martinez kind of fell into the tree of woe position, and then Serena was just taking these shots. I was like, I believe that may be illegal. She also smashed her with a drop kick and went for the deep tox, but this somehow triggered both of them going for the most devastating move in all of sports entertainment but I suppose they were watching earlier and they weren't going to fall for it. There was then also cross arm bars and going after each other's wrists. And I'm pretty sure we had some chokes in there as well. And then it turned into yet more wrestling tennis because Mercedes was blocking everything. <laughs> Serena Deeb was throwing at her when she gave her a German suplex and Deeb landed right on her head. That's what I did too. For some reason, I was standing up watching this match I <laughs> just stared down on it like, man, that didn't look good at all. This must have been planned though, because Serena sold it like, oh my gosh, I can't get up. But it was a massive trick, because as soon as Martinez came close, <laughs> Serena did better. She's an absolute psycho, and she also used this to lock in the Serenity Lock, but Mercedes Martinez was able to get out of it. This was really good. It also kind of worked against Dee because it was actually Martinez that was able to lock in her sleeper, which she had been going through throughout the match. And I've said it once, I've said it a thousand times. If you are stranded on somebody, they can't breathe. You're in a wrestling match, you gotta tap out. She did. Mercedes Martinez retained. So this was just another top, top match, and they hugged afterwards because Ring of Honor is all about respect. Seriously, if you just like the art of wrestling, I keep repeating myself in this ups and downs, go and watch it up. If they just had the best video for Samoa Joe versus Jay Lethal, given that they do have a crazy history, and also a recent one in AEW, when it was time for our TV title match. Joe also interrupted Jay Lethal's entrance here, which was absolutely perfect, because think what these jabronis have been doing for Samoa Joe over the last few months. So as soon as somebody said, oh yeah, by the way, Samo, now you can attack them for real. He was like, well, I'm not waiting. I'm going to go. Some of the chops they gave each other to were so hard. I think I bruised and Jay Lethal, he understands 2022 wrestling because he hit three dives and all of this was before the bell had gone off. They were also using Barry Barricade and Alan the announce table because flub those guys, who cares? When Satnam Singh turned up and he started to pulverize Samoa Joe. And once again, it wasn't a disqualification because this thing hadn't even officially started. So this was your sports entertainment portion of the evening, but I will tell you this, it was so well planned out around about this stage in proceedings, I wanted something different. Thing and Lethal then also used a chair before the referee was like, all right, big man, you got to go to the back. But once again, this just planted the seed that Samoa Joe could lose. It worked for me, I believed it. It was just booked to bring joy though, because it barely hurt Samojo, who was up almost instantly and going back to the shots. I just need to say this, it is fantastic to see Samojo back in a wrestling ring. He just got something about him. They carried on with Larry at sunset flips and who knows what else, but the attack earlier on eventually did get to Samojo, especially his arm, which started to flash red. I suppose he turned into the end of level boss. Lethal did use that to advantage, but because he is a mega dick, he can't help himself. And he actually tried to muscle buster Samoa Joe, who turned and just went no. Joe did fight out of it, but somehow he still got hit with the lethal injection for an awesome near fall. And then when he went for the muscle buster, Sanjay Dutt was out here casting distraction. And I was like, damn it. I mean, it was always going to happen because if it hadn't have happened, I'd be like, well, that was weird. Where the hell was Sanjay? And it was after this where Jay Lethal got the ring bell. He twonked Samoa Joe right in the head because the referee wasn't looking. That led to a great near fall. <laughs> like all the other matches on the evening, it was just go, 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 boo, 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 boo. I mean, it was so crazy I threw my pen away because like, how am I going to recount this? 
And I was like, no, that's a lie. I didn't use a pen to make notes for ups and downs. It's not 1879. It ended though when Joe was able to just grab Lethal throughout all of this madness and apply the choke. And I'm not going to repeat myself again because I've already said it, but people like to have oxygen in their lungs. Jay Lethal had to give it up. Samoa Joe is still your champion. And once again, just feature him on TV more because I simply love him. Oh. We also got it confirmed on this show that Brian Danielson is returning to Dynamite on Wednesday and he's fighting Daniel Garcia, so that's exciting. When it turned out our main event was indeed FTR versus the Briscoes, two out of three falls. Let's just get it out of the way now. Flubbing fantastic. I mean, before they did anything, the crowd was losing their ship, which got even better because when they locked up, people treated it like they'd seen the greatest thing ever. And I could not be a bigger fan of stuff like this happening because it gets you all fired up and it gets you ready in your tum tum. The thing between these two teams too is that they don't do anything where you go, well, I've never seen that before, but they take the fundamentals and they just make them mean so damn much. I mean, when Jay Briscoe tagged in and looked at Dax Harwood, there was so much intensity here, I could feel it bubbling over. And soon the suplexes arrived, which ended with Dax going outside to the floor where he sold his shoulder. We had the doctor come out. Because, of course, this has been a problem for him, so now you were like, oh no. Ash Wheeler and Jay then hit each other as hard as they could when we flip reverse the spot we'd just seen. Because now it was Briscoe who was like, oh man, I don't feel very good with the doctor checking on him. But he was like, get out of here, pal. I'm not stopping. And then from here, I think Mark got the tag. They just started chopping each other. And that was quite literally the noise. The tag claxon kind of sounded here because everybody was doing something including Mark picking Cash up by his nose, which looked horrible. But Willie was having none of that. He was like, excuse me, that's my smelling device. So he wrecked him with a lariat. Throughout all this, I think Dax got tagged in there somewhere. He did hit a DDT, but then from nowhere, the Briscoes busted out the Doomsday device and they won the first fall. This is when we were back to using Barry Barricade because people were being thrown into this like it's not some steel that would hurt your back. And then man, Dax Harwood, he hit a top rope back suplex, again, from the top rope. That's stupid, I didn't need to say that. But I watched it like this. I mean, you fought me back. You don't know where you're going. That must be terrifying. He was still unable to make the tag though because the Briscoes kept cutting him off, but this was so good because it turned him into a superhero. And of course, you already know what did happen. He did eventually get cashed. The whole place went crazy. The emotion in this. Wheeler also hit every single move he's ever learned ever, so I was laughing. But then there was kind of so much fracas here. Jay had the ring bell and he smashed Cash right in the face. And I absolutely bit on that because, of course, the Briscoes were one fall up to nothing, so I thought they were going to win. It didn't happen. It got broken up. Then I surveyed the area and I was like, wait a minute. Everybody is bleeding. Why not? Thankfully, Dax was able to recover throughout all of this and he face busted Mark right into Simba the Still Steps. But this was a very good plan. FTR hit the big rig. We're now one to one. This then just got silly because there were so many near falls and so many suplex and so many power drivers. I was kind of spinning around like a lost dog. But it was just all so well timed, you couldn't help but make noise they would draw you in. You could just tell the shenanigans were coming too because in a match like this that goes this long, you need some of them. So when they were all fighting for their big moves, the referee accidentally got hit by a Briscoe and down he went. This allowed Jay to hit the driller onto Dax Harwood and have the visual pinfall. But again, if there's no official, nobody can make the three. So now we have a contentious issue, especially after this tool, because FTR fought back into it. They hit the big rig and somehow the Briscoes kicked out. I don't think that's ever happened before. We then hit the 40 minute mark, if you can believe it, but it's important to note that because even at this stage, they just started to go even faster and bust out even more maneuvers. But let's just talk about the finish instead because Dax and Jay were tossing on the top as always, where Harwood got into position for an avalanche power driver and he hit. This got even better too because Dax didn't really make a pin. He kind of just like floppy fish down into the pinning position. It did result in the three. It meant FTR retained their titles and straight away people going, well, was this better than the first one? They are both absolutely brilliant. And if you push them together as a pair, it is perfect tag team wrestling. Up. There was so much love afterwards to the point FTR can never be bad guys again because the things they say are too virtuous and cool. And also, if this is how an eight-year-old girl fights, I never want to fight an eight-year-old girl. And just to give you some tease to end, out came William Regal, out came Wheeler Utah, and out came Claudio to kind of insinuate, well, we'd like a match too. Who doesn't want to see that? 
What a flipping great pay-per-view. Up. Now, please do leave a comment below and let us know what you thought about last night's ring of honor pay-per-view. Like the video, share the video, and subscribe. Head over to worldculture.com where we shall keep you up to date with all the news. Make sure you come follow us on social media. We have other videos. Watch them. My name is Ivan Watt Culture. Make sure you have yourself a lovely little day. Goodbye.